2001, and as Harry Potter and Frodo Baggins head out on a great adventure at the box office, a great adventure in the wrestling world is coming to an end. April the 1st, 2001, the Houston Astrodome. It's considered the final resting place of the Attitude Era. Our brains fizz with nostalgia when we think of this particular wrestling show. But when we look a little bit deeper into the glass, does it still hold water? My name is Tom Campbell and this is WrestleMania X7 Retrograded. First, let's address a couple of elephants in the room. WrestleMania X7, WrestleMania 17. Oof. I don't know. They call it both on the night. Call it whatever you want to call it. Also, no Jerry Lawler on commentary. He'd left the company a couple of weeks before this after they sacked Stacey Carter, his then girlfriend. So we have Paul Heyman making his first WrestleMania appearance, which is quite exciting. And we get underway with William Regal, the commissioner of the WWF, challenging Chris Jericho for the Intercontinental Championship. These two have gone back and forth on television for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Chris Jericho besmirching the commissioner's tea. He took a, took a pee in it, basically. And it's led to this match tonight. Uh, Jericho starts hot, but Regal wears down the injured shoulder of Jericho through most of this match. Hits some beautiful suplexes. Uh, manages to stop Jericho's offense several times by just focusing on that shoulder. The end comes when Jericho drives Regal into the exposed turnbuckle, followed by a bulldog, suplex, and a lion salt for the one, two, three to retain his championship. Uh, I'm giving this a C minus. Early in this match, right, JR hit the nail on the head. He's good like that sometimes. And uh, he said that Jericho and Regal uh, like oil and water, and that couldn't have been more true. These two, for some reason, were at points moving at different speeds, and in some parts, different directions. Uh, it felt like Regal didn't quite know how to take some of Jericho's offense, or it felt like Jericho was, wasn't just meshing well enough with Regal, couldn't quite tell. This didn't really click, I think, as much as many people were hoping that it would. But be that as it may, it was fine. It was odd. But it was, it was fine. A six-man tag team match up next. Right to center members Val Venus, the good father, and Bull Buchanan, with Stephen Richards in their corner, are taking on the APA with Jackie in their corner and Taz. A big old brawl to start with Jackie hitting a DDT on Stephen Richards, which was quite fun. Taz gets worked over for quite a bit of this match until he makes the hot tag to Bradshaw, the Texas boy who just goes wild. Everyone back in the ring for craziness. Goodfather goes for the move that used to be called the Ho Train, uh, but Bradshaw manages to get out of the way and clatter him with a clothesline from hell for the one, two, three. Big win for the APA and Taz at WrestleMania. This was a C plus for me. It was a short, intense affair. A lot of fun, right result with the crowd. They really loved seeing Bradshaw pick up the win in this one. I believe this might be sort of the, 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 the last cry of the right to censor as well. I think after this, we see them uh, disappear from televisions completely. So uh, press F for RTC. The Hardcore Championship on the line now as Raven defends against The Big Show and Kane. Uh, this starts even before Big Show's got in the ring as Kane just hoofs Raven at Big Show and then jumps off the top rope and takes them both out. Uh, within minutes, this match is in the bowels of the Astrodome. Three really memorable spots from this match. Raven getting absolutely hoofed through a glass window. Uh, no thanks. Don't like that. Made me feel a bit sick seeing that. I'm surprised Raven wasn't more cut to pieces than he was. Big Show and Kane go crashing through a supporting wall at one point, and we get golf buggy wars. This is where uh, Raven tries to drive off in a golf buggy. Big Show jumps on the back of it. Uh, they end up crashing the buggy uh, into a gate. They actually nearly take WrestleMania off the air at this point because they drive over some cables that could have just stopped WrestleMania X7 completely which is quite an exciting fact. We wouldn't have been doing graded, or if we were, it would have ended about here. Uh, we also get the great visual after this of Kane chasing them in a golf buggy of his own with a referee on the back. 
It's like the weirdest episode of Wacky Races you've ever seen. Uh, the match ends on the entrance ramp. Uh, Big Show and Raven get booted off the ramp and through a technical area underneath. Kane leaps off with either an elbow drop or a leg drop. Can't quite tell, but it gets him the three and it gets him the hardcore championship. I'm giving this a B minus. It was more fun than it deserved to be. <laughs> It was far more entertaining than it should have been. Um, they, they had some laughs with this, uh, some memorable spots in this that, that when you think of WrestleMania of this year, you remember some of the bits in this particular match. Uh, it was great. I loved it. B minus. The European Championships on the line next. It's Eddie Guerrero challenging test for the title. Eddie is flanked by his Lugs sponsored athlete Perry Satin wearing a Jamiroquai special. Doesn't he look lovely? Uh, Test is on top early into this match. Guerrero sends Test to the outside, but he gets his foot caught in the ropes, leaving Perry Satin just to clobber him in the chest while he's hanging upside down. And then it dawns on everybody that, oh, Test is actually stuck there. This wasn't a spot. He's actually caught there. Uh, cue the ref and Eddie Guerrero trying to prise the ropes apart so they can get his foot out. <laughs> and a big way from the crowd once they actually do it. Eddie wears down Test uh, with sleeper holds in this one until Test powers up and hits a cracking tilt a whirl slam. Uh, Test is on the offense until Perry Satin, with the referee distracted, jumps in the ring and nails a moss covered, three handled family credenza. You find a better name for a spinning fisherman suplex. You can't, can you? Exactly. Don't even at me. Uh, Test fights him off as well, goes for the cover on Eddie Guerrero, but gets pulled out almost by Dean Malenko, who makes an appearance. He's distracted by Dean long enough for Eddie to grab the European title, clog him in the face with it. Quick cover, one, two, three. Eddie Guerrero is your new European champion. This was a C for me. Enjoyed this. This was a good undercard match between two guys who meshed really well. Much better than Jericho and Regal did earlier on, uh, but that doesn't take some beating. Guerrero's a really nice fit for European champion, but I have a feeling in a couple of years time, he will go on to much bigger endeavors. Hmm. Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle is next on the docket. And with that, we get a little peek behind the scenes of the work in progress, work rate era. This is a match that is very much ahead of its time, but the Houston Astrodome crowd absolutely eat it up. We get some quality techers to start. Matt Wrestling from Benoit and Angle that the crowd are really into. They're silent at points, but when the match, when the Matt Wrestling breaks up, you hear nice applause, you hear cheers, they're into it. And every single time they're wrestling, Benoit is getting the upper hand on Angle. You can see Angle get more and more frustrated to the point where he just sideswipes Benoit and this just turns into a fight. Angle's wearing down Benoit for ages, uh, hitting him with uh, all kinds of just cheap, nasty moves. Angle is like, now I can't out wrestle you, so I'm just gonna beat you anyway. Benoit fights back with a plethora of suplexes, vertical, super. German, German, German. Uh, both men trade submission holds. We see Angle with the cross face. We see Benoit with the ankle lock. Uh, this is just getting faster and faster and more intense as it goes on. Uh, the referee uh, gets taken to one side at one point, which allows Angle uh, to hoof Benoit low. Benoit manages to scramble to try and get a cross face on, but Angle rolls him up, grabs the tights, and gets the cheap win and takes his leave. Oh man, this was an A+. This was a ride. It was something that was many years ahead of its time, but it was beloved by the crowd. These two were just so beautifully connected in this match. And it paced well, and it built well, and Angle getting the cheap win is absolutely the right thing, because it's like Angle going, I can out-wrestle Benoit, but then just forced to take a cheap win over Benoit. Builds to more stuff. A plus, just mwah. Chef's kiss for you. The Women's Championship is on the line next as China challenges Ivory. China had her neck broken by the right to censor, so this is the redemption of China tonight. And uh, this starts with Ivory clocking China in the back of the head with the Women's Championship. And I kind of thought, well, if that was it, that'd be fine. Uh, Ivory, just on the back of China, just wailing with punches. And that is the final offense that Ivory will ever have, ever. As China manages to get back to her feet, close lines, close lines, close lines, powerbomb, military press, cover lackadaisical, just leans on the back of Ivory. One, two, three. 
three. And China is the women's championship with great ease. Uh, that was a D for me. Uh, it was nothing special. Uh, I, it, was the, it was the end of a story. It was the end of the redemption story for China. So that bit is good. We get a nice sort of tied off end to the story. Um, but I wasn't a fan of the match. I'm not a fan of China becoming women's champion. Uh, she'll be leaving the company soon um, once she realizes that actually uh, there's no plans for her other than the women's division and a number of other things as well. And uh, but this, but all, but that's not connected to my score of the match. The match is just a dig, so I just didn't really. I didn't really like it. I kind of thought it was just a burial of ivory a little bit. Could have done something a little bit more, but hey, that's that. The street fight is up next. Vince McMahon versus Shane McMahon. There's a lot to unpack here. So here's the cliff notes. Vince McMahon wants a divorce from Linda McMahon. Linda was so shocked by this, she went into a coma-like state. She is now zombified Linda. Just sits there all day in the house. Uh, meanwhile, Vince and Trish have started an affair and most episodes of Raw and SmackDown include Vince McMahon wearing the face off of Trish Stratus. Yes, that is exactly what wrestling's all about. It was one of those moments where if a family member walked in on you watching wrestling, you'd have to awkwardly explain what you're doing with your life. Thanks, Vince. I'm glad you had fun. Um, so that's happening. Shane McMahon is back to defend the honor of his mother. The street fight match is made and Mick Foley is made the guest referee because Mick Foley was fired by Vince McMahon uh, late last year and there's revenge on his mind for that. So that pretty much sets us up for this street fight. Oh wait, I forgot. <laughs> Shane McMahon bought WCW the week before this match. And now that's been slotted in to the storyline as well. Uh, the plan was, so the tale goes, that the WCW wrestlers were going to invade this match and attack Vince McMahon. But Sean Stasiak apparently told uh, several news outlets all about this. And Vince was so angry, he didn't want them to come to WrestleMania at all. But uh, they were able to uh, cool his jets and they got to WrestleMania. But, oh my gosh, the indignity of this. So Shane McMahon gets in the ring before the street fight and says, big shout to my boys from WCW. Like, you're already burying your own company, mate. Um, we then cut using the long, 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 long super zoom on the camera to the saddest looking skybox that you ever did see, featuring a smattering of WCW guys. I see Stasiak there, Hugh Morris, Stacey Keebler, Mike Sanders. I think Chavo Guerrero Jr. might be there. <laughs> While Eddie's in the main one. Um, and then you just have this, and they all look fed up. <laughs> they all look like they're having the worst time, except Stacey Keebler who's smiling. And then the graphic just appears that says, WCW Wrestlers. <laughs> There's just no dignity in it at all. Anyway, the match starts. Shane McMahon is just dominating his dad. He goes for Old Faithful. The elbow drop off the top through the announce table. But Stephanie McMahon pulls her dad out of the way and stops him from uh, getting put through the table. Uh, out comes Trish Stratus with Linda McMahon in a wheelchair. Trish brings Linda to ringside. Trish goes to check on Vince McMahon, helps him back to his feet and then slaps the taste out of his mouth. And Stephanie, who never liked Trish anyway, uh, sees this as a perfectly good reason to attack. And then they start brawling into the ring and then they fight up the ramp and they're gone. Vince McMahon clatters referee Mick Foley with steel chairs. Uh, he then gets Linda McMahon to sit in the ring whilst he beats Shane McMahon up some more. So Linda McMahon is sat in the ring and uh, watching Vince beat up Shane. And as Vince holds the garbage can, over his head, he's about to strike Shane. As he does that, Linda McMahon stands up. And I swear, I swear on the, on the wings of love that that is the loudest pop of the night from the Astrodome to Linda rising. <laughs> and I'm counting the pop that Steve Austin's gonna get when he walks out later on. I swear that's the biggest pop of the night for Linda. Linda hoops McMahon in the grapefruit. Foley's back in the ring, batters Vince some more. Shane comes off with a coast to coast and pins his old dur dur one, two, three. Oh, oh. I don't even smoke, but I need a cigarette after that. But it's getting an A from me, you know? This was, I think, with the exception of um, 
Beulah McGillicutty versus Bill Alfonso from ECW from a few years before. With the exception of that, I think this is the greatest non-wrestler wrestling match in history. I really do. Was it overbooked? Absolutely. <laughs> Did it need to be overbooked? Absolutely. Was I entertained from start to finish? Absolutely. <laughs> this in itself is a wrestling style. You know how people talk about strong style and British strong style. This I like to call soap opera style. This is sports entertainment. This is, this is the wacky soap opera element of wrestling at its absolute finest. And if you ever wanted to show anybody why wrestling is like soap opera, you would show them this match. Giving it an A. Well done to all the players. You thoroughly sports entertained the life out of me. Time for TLC2. They stole the show in the summer and they have the chance to do it again. It's the Dudleys, the Hardys and Edge and Christian for the WWF Tag Team Championships. This feels like a very different match to the one they had before. It almost feels like they, they kick off where they left off from SummerSlam's TLC match. Because within like six minutes, we've had the Hardys jump off the ladders and we've had the Dudleys put people through tables. So we're off to a start. Each of the teams in this match have themselves a corner person that ends up getting involved in pretty quick succession. Spike Dudley uh, makes his way out to the ring to hit a Dudley dog on Christian through the table outside that looked amazing. Out comes Rhino, who gores Matt Hardy through a table. That looked incredible. Here comes Lita uh, to stop Edge from climbing up the, up the ladder, buff Bubba with a chair and whip her top off for getting 3D'd. Uh, all the bit players in this really added to the match. Uh, Jeff Hardy pulls out his customary, much bigger than your ladder ladder, climbs at the top of it outside the ring, and hits a swanton on Spike and Rhino that actually knocked Spike Dudley's teeth out, so we understand. Uh, as the match wears on, there is a botch that turns into the greatest moment of this match. So Jeff Hardy attempts to walk across the ladders, he has three ladders pitched up, he attempts to walk across all three. A bit like he is Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins walking across the roofs. However, on the second ladder he loses his balance and he just goes, oh forget it, I'm just going to climb up like normal. Uh, he climbs up the ladder, he grabs the belt, he has the ladder pulled away from him, and then there's Edge on the, my ladder's bigger than your ladder ladder, jumps off the top and spears Jeff and mid-air, these two just collide and crash like a meteor. Edge hits the ground, his eyes bug out as he leans back, the crowd roar, everything about this bit is iconic, Pwah. cheers aplenty from the Astrodome, oh my god this was great, this was, this was great, and, uh, and the match wears on from there, we see Bubba and Matt Hardy go up for the Go up for the belts, but Rhino reappears, pushes their ladder, and they go crashing through some tables outside the ring. Rhino puts Christian on his shoulders, carries him up the ladder, and Christian grabs the belts. Edge and Christian retain the tag team titles in what has been an absolute demolition derby. And it's worthy of an A+. I was really nervous as to how they would follow up the TLC at SummerSlam, and even their triple threat ladder match at WrestleMania 2000 but they made it feel so different and they made it feel so special and they made it their own thing and, and I loved it for many different reasons in this case. So top marks to everybody involved. And now for something completely different, the Gimmick Battle Royal, the showcase of the somewhat immortals, the Bushwhackers, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, the Iron Sheik, Earthquake the Goon, Doink the Clown, Kimchi and Kamala, Nikolai Volkov, who for some reason comes out to the Finnish national anthem, which is a bit weird, Michael P.S. Hayes, the One Man Gang, Hillbilly Jim, Brother Love, Sergeant Slaughter, and the Gobbledygooker. It is just an absolute gathering. Big shout to Tugboat as well, who I think I might have left off, I can't remember. Um, of, of, it's just a gathering of, of wacky characters from over the last couple of decades. Mean Gene Oakland and Bobby the Brain Heenan are commentating this match, which is a superb touch. Uh, this is just a cluster that ends with Hillbilly Jim getting dumped out by the Iron Sheik last. Sheiky Baby wins the Battle Royal. Sergeant Slaughter gets back in the ring after this and uh, attacks Sheik from behind, locks in the Cobra Clutch uh, to get a, uh, a memorable win for America over Iran. We did it, we did it. Um, I'm not grading this. No grade, because it was, it was a terrible Battle Royal. 
No one did anything. It wasn't meant to be a, a quality wrestling match. And I feel bad grading it. It's not worthy of an A+, plus because it wasn't a great wrestling match. It's not worthy of an E, because it was far too entertaining. So I'm not going to grade it. This was just a wonderful moment that occurred in the middle of a very busy wrestling show. And, and I was here for it. There's a few of those guys where you think, actually, they've held out quite well. Do the dumpster Drosy, I thought looked in good nick. <laughs> Give him another run. Give Drosy another run. Time to get super serial. Triple H versus The Undertaker right now. Uh, Motorhead played Triple H to the ring. And I love it when Lemmy plays Triple H to the ring because it's clear that he doesn't quite know all the words to time to play the game. So he riffs a little bit. He riffs even harder a couple of years later when he does it again. <laughs> bless you, Lemmy. God bless you. Uh, Triple H and Undertaker scrap to start with. Uh, Triple H tries to bring in the sledgehammer early on. Referee says no before he gets knocked out when Undertaker tries to counter the pedigree and flips Triple H into the ref and the ref is out. This goes into the crowd and uh, we see an unintentionally hilarious moment occur in this match. As they're fighting on uh, a bit of scaffolding, we see Undertaker chokeslam Triple H and the camera angle makes it look as if Triple H has just been chokeslammed into the vortex. Like he just disappears. Like that's it now. Maybe like, like they're playing some weird game of Portal and he'll just appear in, in, in Hereford, maybe. Uh, they show a couple more shots of this amazing fall and then they show one that gives the game away, which is from the top. And you see Triple H just land beautifully onto a lovely pillowed area. <laughs> Triple H is getting checked over by the EMTs, or as I'm calling them tonight, uh, the engineers of mattress tushiness. And as he is, Undertaker jumps off the scaffolding and lands an elbow drop on Triple H. But because they're on this mattress, like they jump a bit <laughs> midair. It's like two brothers play fighting on the bed. <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be that way. Uh, Taker shoes away the EMTs, they fight back into the ring and um, Undertaker hits a tombstone, which at this point is about as rare as Mewtwo. They've, they've sort of outlawed pile drivers, so you don't see them very often. So Undertaker busting out a tombstone, it's quite a special moment. Uh, but the referee is still out, so nothing good comes of that. Goes for the last ride, but Triple H has grabbed the sledgehammer, hasn't he? And as he's up for the last ride, he clonk, clonks Undertaker in the back with the sledgehammer to break up the last ride. Uh, Undertaker, who's been bloodied by this point, uh, is getting punched in the corner by Triple H. Uh, Stan Triple H stands on the top rope, punching Triple H in the face. Big mistake. Undertaker lifts him up, last ride out of the corner. The referee is finally somewhat compass mentors. Cover, one, two, three. Undertaker wins the match. Giving it a B, I thought this was a really fun match between these two. First time on commentary that uh, the streak of The Undertaker has even been acknowledged. And it was only like a passing reference. It wasn't like the, the big pillar pivoting point of the match. It was just like, oh, Undertaker is still undefeated at WrestleMania and, and other things. But these two, they, they, they were good. It was maybe a little bit long, maybe a touch long, but I enjoyed it. It was good fun. And uh, we'll always remember the bouncy pillow spot. It was beautiful. So we come to the reason why we are here. It is the WWF Championship match between The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. The Rock is the reigning champion. Steve Austin is desperate to get back on top of the company. He needs to beat The Rock tonight. Before we get into the match, it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Limb Biscuit, my way, the music video to that. Mwah, 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 mwah. Amazing. The greatest, one of the greatest, I love the fact that it inspired so many people to go into video editing. <laughs> so many wrestling fans uh, picked up their love of video editing from that music video. It's true, I love it. And also, you forget, unless you watch that music video, that there was an extra caveat in this match that was binned off very quickly, uh, which was apparently Deborah was meant to be The Rock's manager for this match as an extra like, oh, bit of a saucy, oh, what will happen here if Deborah's in the Rock's corner? What's gonna happen? And then they kind of realized, nah, let's just make it about Austin and the Rock instead. So they just quietly got rid of that bit. And you remember it when you watch the music video. Uh, it's, it's great, it's, it's, the, it's the best. It is simply the best. And if you don't agree, if it doesn't give you goosebumps, then there's no hope for you really. 
We find out before this match starts that it is now no disqualification and JR is shocked by this. What? When, when did that happen? Out comes Steve Austin, out comes The Rock. The Rock is posing on the top rope. As he comes down off the rope, he immediately gets decked by Steve Austin and immediately Austin is on him. Austin grabs The Rock's WWF title, swings to hit him with it and The Rock ducks. Fez Prez, outside the ring these two go after a stunner and a rock bottom have both been countered. They go fighting outside. This is the first 90 seconds. This is how this match starts. Like, we've seen all that within a minute and a half. It's ridiculous. The no DQ bit adds a real extra depth to this match. Like, it makes it a little bit edgier. And also, you see, really, much earlier on than you realise, you see Steve Austin start to go to the dark side. Like, you see him taking off the turnbuckle pads and he's gonna drive The Rock's head into it. You just see him being a little bit more desperate to win the title. Desperate is probably the word. Uh, they batter each other all around the ring. Both men are bloodied messes by the time they are back in the ring. We see Austin going for, we see Rock going for the sharpshooter. Austin gets a sharpshooter in of his own. Austin locks in the million dollar dream, which JR plays is like, this is one of the oldest moves in Austin's playbook. He hasn't used this in years. Like this is going back to his ringmaster days and oh, all this stuff. Rock counters it the same way that Bret Hart counted it at Survivor Series 96. Oh God, Rock hits a stunner. Austin, oh, it's just, as Rock hits the stunner, by the way, before I get too excited, Rock hits the stunner, Vince McMahon comes out, poor quoi. Here comes Vince McMahon, and Rock goes for a cover, and Vince pulls the Rock leg, pulls the Rock's leg, stops the cover going down. Rock chases Vince around the ring, and as, Aust as Rock gets back in the ring, he gets hit with a Rock bottom by Austin. All right, two and a half count. Austin then demands Vince get him a steel chair. Okay, what's this all about, lads? Uh, Rock manages to fight off Austin for a little bit longer. Uh, Rock goes for a cover at one point, and Vince is on the apron distracting the ref. What's going on, lads? Rock brings Vince in, smacks Vince around. Austin hits a stunner, but Rock kicks out. Rock and Austin and Vince are working together. Like, this, uh, Vince hits Rock with a chair. Vince hands Austin the chair. Chair shot by Austin and Rock keeps kicking out. The finishes of the match, the finish is Austin just pummeling the Rock with a chair into oblivion. Just pummels him with his chair, pins him, one, two, three. And Austin is the new WWF champion. Shakes hands with Vince McMahon and they have beers together. And this is the quietest the crowd have been all night. Like they have been the greatest crowd, like hot for everything. And it was as the, the fix was starting to go in that the crowd started to die down. And they actually started to get behind The Rock because they were really anti-Rock for most of this match. But then The Rock's kick out started getting big pops. It was a, it was a double turn which felt, which oh, didn't, didn't, feel, didn't feel quite right. And it wasn't like the crowd were booing Steve Austin at the end. I don't know whether they were expecting like boos and garbage to be thrown in the ring, but it was just quiet. It was just a bit flat, which, which is a shame because they're in Texas and everybody wants to cheer Steve Austin, but they've just watched Steve Austin turn heel and side with Vince. So there's no reason to cheer him. So they just don't do anything. Oh, it's a real weird ending. Weird. Despite that, right, this match is still worthy of an A, right? From the moment it started, this felt like a big deal. This was a big match, big money match between two of the biggest stars in wrestling at this point. And the finish was a paradigm shift for what would come. And I, I don't want to give it an A+, because as, as great as everything was about this, the way it was built, the match itself, the videos, the, the in-ring action, the heel turn just didn't quite, wasn't the right time. And it sort of fell a bit flat. And, and maybe if you were there, you might have heard different, but to me watching at home, 
fell flat. But it's still worthy of an A, because this is still a great night. This is still a great showcase. Let, let's not let that finish daunt that. Um, but I just can't give it an A+. Plus. If it, it just the, oh no, not an A+. Plus. It's an A though, it's an A! It's Austin and The Rock, Pig in WrestleMania X7. It's great, just the finish. It's an A. And you know what? This WrestleMania still gets an A to me as well. Now, not every match was blow your mind brilliant. It absolutely wasn't. But there was enough greatness in there to offset some of the stuff that didn't quite click. Some phenomenal uh, shenanigans in this show. The ladder match, the street fight, Benoit and Angle in there as well. Topped off by Steve Austin and The Rock despite the finish. This was still a WrestleMania to remember. And it only feels appropriate that on April the 1st, WWF decided to pull the ultimate April Fool and have Steve Austin turn heel in Texas. Except it wasn't even an April Fool. <laughs> Stay safe. Love you, bye.